Good morning. It's a beautiful day. It's it's only 7.19 in the morning here in Florida, in Ocala, Florida. And uh, I'm thinking later on I'm going to go for a walk. I went yesterday, I went on a hike with Robin. And we went to a place called Indian Lake State Forest. There's the, the brochure. And uh, we took a walk uh, through this newly created trail, you know, the, this, the forestry division or somebody makes these trails and they had some nice walkovers made out of like a boardwalk. So um, you could walk over the swampy areas and, and not get your ankles, you know, soaking wet and possibly bitten by snakes. <laughs> But it was really beautiful. And it didn't feel, I didn't feel worried at all. There was a fisherman there who was at the lake itself, Indian Lake. There was a fisherman there who yelled from across the lake that he had seen a, uh, um, an alligator where we were. So anyway, just it kind of illustrates how small the lake is. It's so small he could actually yell across it. And, uh, so at that point, we, we were already looking for alligators, just in case, because you know they're everywhere around here. But anyway, we never did see one, but we did walk around the whole lake and we took in the hiking trails, only probably a mile, maybe not even a mile, but anyway. So it got me in the mood for doing a painting of, of beautiful outdoor spring-like. It's just, everything was oozing, the birds were singing. So this is the painting I want to do today. It doesn't really look like Indian Lake State Forest, but it's just a scene with a tree and grass and some wildflowers. And it's a pretty easy composition, actually, if you want to try to emulate this. I don't really do these so that you can paint what I paint. I, I do these so that we can share with each other what we're doing, you with yours, me with mine. And I love seeing yours. So, um, by the way, if you do want to, I have, ah, see, I keep thinking I got to do a, a Facebook page or something. I'll do that today. A Papa Paints Facebook page. But anyway, let me show you how I painted this. And I'm going to narrate it now because I didn't uh, narrate it when I was doing it. I was too busy thinking about the crap. Sorry about the stuff. <laughs> All right, ready? Three, two, one. Push the button. Three, two, one, now. All right, there we go. Now we're at the beginning of the blank greeting card. Uh, on the right side of the page of the picture, you see the two pans of um, Windsor and Newton watercolor. And I'm gonna real roughly put a light pencil mark on here to kind of give me some guidelines where I want the the uh, the hills to be in the background. See, I'm, I'm in Florida, so there's not there there are there are hills here. I don't think there were no hills, but I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, I did I did have a reference photo also, so that was kind of helpful. Um, so that's something I found on the internet, but I didn't really copy it. I just used this reference for the colors. And uh, so yesterday, when we were walking. While, while I'm laying down the sketch here, I'll tell you about the walk. We, uh, well, I had, we, Robin had read an article in uh, a local newspaper website. I don't really know if they have a paper anymore, this particular one. I think they just have a website, but anyway, it's a news outlet. And she read an article in, it's called ocala-news.com. She read an item there about a new trail that we're going to go today, today, this day, Friday. They're going to meet like this morning and they're going to walk the trail. I guess they have a guided tour. Somebody's going to be talking to them about the place. So that that ought to be nice. I think today Robin and I are going to go to uh, a different trail that goes around a different pond in a different city, <laughs> which is in Dunellan, which is really not that far from here. But anyway, so when we got there, I had never even heard of Indian Lake State Forest. It's in the county that I live in, but I honestly never heard of it before. And uh, so when I read, when I went to Google Maps to look to see where it was, 
I was thinking, well, I've never really been down that road. Isn't that something? See, this county is very big. It's called Marion County, Florida. And it says, they say it's bigger than the state of Rhode Island. And I believe it. it's very big, very big. So Robin and I had never been down this particular road before. And, uh, well, not that stretch of it. We've been down part of it. And we went uh, yesterday to find it. And when we found it, we got out of the car and it was just so beautiful. It's like we walked into the Garden of Eden or something. It was just so pretty. And uh, walked down to the, to the lake. And at this point, uh, of course, the first thing we're thinking about is alligators because there's always alligators. Everywhere you go, when we're, if there's a body of water here in Florida, there's alligators. Don't, don't let the fact, it's like if you're going to a theme park, like Disney, don't let the fact that everything else is artificial, don't let that fool you into thinking that the wildlife in the water is not real. It is real. I think Disney World property used to be, I'm pretty sure it was a swamp at one time, or at least a marshland. And I don't even know what the difference is between a swamp and a marshland. But anyway, so we went to this place, Indian Lake State Park, State Forest, I'm sorry. And uh, and we walked around and they had all these beautiful little trails and they were well marked. So you didn't have to worry if you were going to get lost like Hansel and Gretel or something like that. <laughs> and uh, we walked around and uh, took pictures and no, we didn't have any bug. We, we brought insect repellent with us, but we didn't really have a problem with them. There was um, no, nothing, there was no mosquitoes, nothing. It was beautiful. The birds were just chirping away. I mean, they were making a lot of sound. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. So yeah, like, you know, when we were younger, I hate to say that when we were younger because it makes it seem like I won't do it again. But the truth is I haven't gone bicycling in a while. I keep thinking I want to go bicycling again, even though I'm considerably older than the last time I bicycled. But nothing is stopping me other than me. So I should do it. But we, anyway, so we used to go bicycling on uh, these trails that used to be railroad lines. They tore up the railroad tracks. Not all of them, Florida still has trains, but, but for some reason they decided some of them weren't necessary anymore. And they tore up the railroad tracks and they made them into hiking trails and bicycle trails. And the signs on these trails, it's, the, the program is called Rails to Trails. And the signs always say no motorized vehicles, okay? But the thing is, we have seen um, like electric people with electric bicycles on them. It doesn't bother me. It's just, uh, it's just the you know keeping up with the times. I guess people have bicycles. I would. Hey, if I had a bicycle that would like pedal assist, or maybe even fully electric, yeah, you know I would ride it on there, as long as I wasn't not allowed to. But it's not really a. Mo it is a motor, but. Anyway, but the trails are so beautiful. And, and so now that we're walking mostly instead of bicycling, we want to go back to some of those places we used to bicycle. And uh, there's a couple. There's one near the University of Florida up in Gainesville. And it's 15 miles, I think. So it's 30, 30 miles round trip, which I don't think I can handle. <laughs> but I could handle the first three or four. Maybe, maybe, maybe five. I don't know. I, so I'm sort of talking about walking. But there's one up there in Gainesville and it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. If you ever happen to be in the area. And, and I've read some of the, uh, when, when we were posting videos of ourselves with the bicycle trips, um, other people would send us links to different trails. It's fun. It's, it's fun, you, you get outdoors, you, you see, you, there's always something that you didn't expect. There's always something. Uh, maybe you'll see a deer, or, and quite frankly, we've seen a lot of alligators on some of those trails. Not on the trails, but on the water next to the trail. 
uh, Robin one time saw two owls like right at her eye level. She was, she just happened to ride her bicycle up to this tree and there were two owls right there. And uh, well, we've seen deer, I've never seen a bear. Thank goodness, I do not want to come across a bear. No, no, no. Everybody tells me I should bring bear spray. Whew. I don't know. It's, I probably should get some bear spray. But, but we have run into snakes. Robin almost ran over a rattlesnake one time. She was ahead of me. And as soon as she, I, I could see the rattlesnake. And I didn't know if she saw it, but she went right past it. And I stopped before it, mostly because I wanted to take a picture of it. And well, I didn't honestly know it was a rattlesnake until after I took the photo, because then you could enlarge the photo and look at it closely. And sure enough, it was a rattlesnake and, uh, and a big one at that. And Robin rode her bicycle right, right in front of it. Oh my gosh. And uh, thank goodness nobody got hurt. And I just stopped, took pictures of it and it, it just slithered into the woods. It didn't, uh, it didn't hurt anybody. So anyway, we've we've done a lot of those, and uh, now we're walking a lot. We're, we're hiking. You call it hiking. Is there a difference between walking and hiking? I don't know. Anyway, well, let me tell you what I'm doing here. It looks like I'm trying to paint a river, doesn't it? That, that wasn't the intent. The intent was I wanted uh, a light green in the middle and then a dark green above it and below it to kind of create this look of a a strip of, of sunlight because I don't know if you can tell I sketched in a little tree there so the tree will be the casting a shadow into the into the light it's not quite dappled light but it's it's like a streak of light I guess you would say and uh, so my uh, the, the way I do it I do the watercolor part of it it's, it's all it's all watercolor um, so as far as the paint is concerned, but th there's a watercolor technique, you know, we actually let the water work the paint. I don't do that as well as other people. Some people are so magnificent with that. I almost, it's almost as if I use watercolor with the watercolor characteristics, if that makes sense to you. Um, but then I seem to paint almost like it's acrylic but not really because you can't uh, on acrylic you can add uh, light on top of dark um, with watercolor you really have to make sure you kind of make room and you in your mind you kind of plan it out where's the lights where's the bright spot going to be and, and try to not paint that so much and then paint the dark you can paint dark over light but you can't paint light over dark with uh with watercolor however you can take um, gouache, and you're gonna see later on. Uh, you, I showed you the, the photo of, the, of the, the actual card that we're working on here, the finished card. And I did make the daisies out of uh, little white spots of, uh, of gouache, because the gouache is more opaque, and it will, uh, will, will blot out some of the, the darker. So you can put light on dark if you use gouache on watercolor. Okay, that's the, the, the message there, I guess. Anyway, the, 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 the uh, painting I did yesterday was, uh, I was trying to make a, another like landscape scene and I had the middle of the picture is the brightest part, which is what I wanted. Usually the middle, usually the sky is the brightest part or the reflection in the water is the brightest part. So, um, but in that particular picture, there was water and there was a bright spot right in the middle. And I thought that would be a cool way to do it. I'd, I'd like it, but I'd, I don't know for sure if I like it. It's, it's, it's a weird thing to say, isn't it? Anyway. So, yeah, today, later on, probably in about an hour, if I'm done making this video, I'm going to, Rob and I are going to go to uh, Danella to this pond and the pond is near the Rainbow River if you if you look on your map or if you're familiar with uh, this area of Florida the Rainbow River is very 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 popular for tubing 
of floating, floating down the river and, and uh, riding an inner tube from upstream down, down to the, uh, to the tuber's exit, that's what they call it. And it's right after you pass under a bridge, which is uh, Highway 41, I think, pretty sure. So you go under Highway 41 bridge and then you, you, that's where you get out. And when I was a kid, there was nothing there. There was a bridge, but there was no like ramp. There was no, nothing built. It was just a dirt bank, you know, embankment is what I meant to say. And uh, we, we'd get out as kids and we'd just get up there and hopefully there'd be somebody with a car who would take you back upstream to where your car was. There always was. That's something weird. And when I say kid, I'm talking about 17, 18, 19 years old even. Yeah, we would do that kind of stuff. I was I was swimming in that river. Um, I, I still would swim in that river. I just haven't gone lately. But, uh, and there are alligators in there. But they don't bother me. <laughs> they haven't yet anyway. But yeah, they are. Are alligators. You gotta be careful not to go to the edges because that's usually where they are. There was only one time I saw an alligator swim uh, near me in the river, and that was that was a little concerning, absolutely. But but it wasn't coming toward me; it was it was just swimming past me. Just another swimmer in the river. Usually, like when you go there now, it's April nineteenth. And it's already busy. The kids, the the kids who are doing now what I used to do then, they're doing the same thing. But now the now the tubes are um, more pretty. We used to just use inner tubes from tires. Now they have now they buy these tubes that are colorful, and some of them even have drink holders in them. <laughs> it's funny. Um, the kids also. I say the kids because. I easily could float down the river. Rob and I could go down today if we wanted to. Float down the river. But that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Go floating down the river. Well, we won't be. We'll, we're gonna walk today. So anyway, so right by, by the exit, the tuber's exit, there is a pond. And I never knew it was there. I've been here for a long time and I never knew there was a pond there. Well, there's a trail that has been built, I guess you call it built, um, carved out of the, of the woods. There's a trail there that goes around the pond. And I think that's about a mile also. It's not that big. So we want to do that today. Take some pictures. The pictures work well as reference photos for the art. Uh, I don't know if I ever told you, but Robin is also an artist. And... Uh, so she does paintings also. I've been doing a lot of these watercolor greeting cards and uh, I like doing them. I like doing them for these videos because they're small. Like I can get them done relatively quickly and uh, it's just a, a wonderful way to brighten somebody's day. You give them a card that you painted. I, I know I've said this before, but if you've ever if you ever just want to make somebody's day, I don't know, paint them a card. Uh, you know, I, was, I was thinking about doing one of these videos to show you how to paint a nice card for Mother's Day. But I thought maybe the better thing to do, to recommend is to find somebody else who has done similar videos. There's probably a lot of them who show, especially to show children how to paint. I, I don't know that if they showed a child how to paint the way I do. I think they, they get it, our children are smart, but I think it's easier to show them some of those, the, the simple brush strokes that some of the other video makers show, some of the other YouTubers, they have this really beautiful technique of just doing brush strokes that, because you can see like right there, look, I'm dabbing, 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 I do a lot of dabbing. And I, it's hard to explain how I'm doing it. And right now you can't even see it because my big hand's in the way. <laughs> Uh, but see, I'm just I'm just using the the bristles of the brush to to add some dots, I guess you will, just little points of of paint. 
Yeah, so if you want to make a, a card for somebody, it, it's, it's a really nice thing. Did I show you... Let me, let me tell you the, the materials. This always comes up. Always, always, always. Somebody says, what paint are you using? Well, it's it's a Winsor & Newton. I don't know if you can see it in the small picture at the bottom here. but It's called Winsor & Newton. It's pan watercolors. It doesn't say pan on the box. So maybe that's not what they call it. This is a Skechers pocket set. And it says Cotman watercolor under Winsor & Newton. So I don't really know what that means. Can you see it? Maybe that's, that's, a, there you go. Can you see that? That's what it says. And that's just one of the two. I have a second one, an older one. That's, I kept this box just because people kept asking me, what paint are you using? The other two questions I get, one is about the brushes and one is about the paper. Okay, let me talk about the brushes first of all. You have to get brushes you like. I do not think that you have to spend a lot of money on brushes. But if you find a brush that you like and it happens to be an expensive brush, well, it's probably going to last a while. I think I've had my brushes 30 years or more, some of them, probably most of them. And they're not all expensive. Some of them were very, very cheap. And so I can't talk about the brushes because they just have so many different types. Check out this one. I don't know if you can see it, but the, the paint isn't even on it anymore. There's just no labeling on it. And it's warped. It's clearly been around the world a couple of times. And uh, it's pretty much the way my brushes are. Now the paper just because you guys ask all the time, what paper are you using? And I, I can't say this is the best, but this is what I'm using. It's called Strathmore. Can you see the name? Strathmore. Now I've read different reviews on Amazon, for example. This, so these are just blank cards, watercolor cards. I think you, and they come with an envelope. So, you know, if you, when you get it done, you can put it in an envelope. Not in it. I don't put it in the envelope. I put it with the envelope. But um, and this is what I use. I honestly cannot swear up and down that one is better than the other. I like I say, I've read on Amazon people leave reviews, and they will uh, have an opinion about the paper. Some people will give it a five stars. Some people give it a one star. Uh, I'll read the one-star reviews. Uh, I think to myself sometimes, sometimes people have legitimate reasons for giving something one star, and sometimes they don't. Um, I think I saw one that said that the water on these cards, the watercolor doesn't, it does not, it's not even or something. But I think that's the artist. I think the artist has to work the water into it. You kind of have to let it soak in if you want to, if you want to use that technique. I I use it sometimes, not not on this picture, but I I knew an author. Uh, he wrote a book about the uh, Florida Gators, the football team, and uh, he had his book on Amazon, and he had a lot, a lot, a lot of five star reviews. He had good reviews from just from readers, but he had a number of one star reviews also. And the I, the irony, is that the right word? The, 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 the crazy thing, I don't know how else to say this, but he was getting one-star reviews from people who didn't like the Gators. <laughs> Not because he didn't like his book. So that, go, go figure that one. So you really can't tell sometimes with the, with the reviews, but if you read them and kind of take them with what I say, grain of salt or whatever they say. You'll, you'll get a better understanding if something is worth buying or not. Oh, oh, the best thing is to just, if it's not that expensive, just to buy it, you know, and try it out and, and see what you like. But anyway, that's, that's what I've been using for a while. Who knows, maybe one day I'll have a different paper. I almost bought a different paper this time. I almost bought the, the one that had uh, rounded edges, rounded corners. And uh, I chose to go with the square corners again kind of my thing I guess so 
summertime is here in Florida. I know it's not technically here, but it felt like summer yesterday when we were walking around. I was hot. I was hot. I get winded. I get winded pretty quick sometimes when I'm walking. I'm doing better though. So I'm trying to walk. My doctor told me, you gotta walk. I said, how far do I have to walk? He said, well, do a mile more each day than you been doing so if I've been walking four miles walk five and I said well I have not been walking four miles a day he said well how far do you walk and I said well I, I don't walk very far so basically I wasn't walking so as long as I get a mile in that's a mile more than I've been doing and if I look at my phone which is what I'm recording on now so I can't show you I can't look at it but I'm pretty sure that that little, you know, that little app that tells you how far you walked. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that for the last couple of months, I've been getting in a mile every day. Maybe a mist. If it's raining out, I'm not going to go walking. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure. I think yesterday we got in maybe three. Walking around the uh, state forest, the Indian Lake State Forest. It was a good walk. Walk. We, I really wish we had seen the alligator, but he wasn't there. Well, actually, Robin said she saw it in the, in the lake, like swimming, and uh, I didn't see it. We saw two people there. Well, we saw three people there. One of them was the fisherman, and he was from New Jersey. And the coincidence was he had worked in the town that Robin's son lives in. So that was kind of coincidental. And uh, we saw two, and he he told us that he brings his dogs to, to the lake to let them run around, which is wonderful for the dogs. Except, well, you know, you know the the deal. Alligators like dogs, and I don't mean as friends. They like dogs. It's not a, not a good thing to bring dogs near a lake with it's an alligator. But we did see two other people. We did not talk to those people, but those other two people had dogs. And they were, one of them was on a leash, no big deal. The other one was running around. Got me worried. Yeah. So, uh, so it's getting back to the topic of brushes. You see the brushes on the left side of the page. Those are just a, just a handful of brushes that I use a lot. Mostly what I do is I, I do the painting and then I look at it and say, well, do I need more contrast? Do I need more darks and lights? Do I need more vertical lines, horizontal lines? Um, do I need more green or, or gray or blue? Or in this case, I, I put some purple here and there just to kind of offset everything. And then the real, the real icing on the cake in this one is going to be the wildflowers which, I, like I said in the beginning, I was using uh, gouache to do that. Yeah. So, today's Friday. Fridays are, even though we're retired, Fridays always, always feel like, you know, you know how Fridays always felt like when you worked, if, you, if you're still working. And if you have weekends off, you know what I mean, right? I had so many jobs where I did not have weekends off. So Fridays were just Friday. Uh, but we do, we do, we do love our days off. Not now so much, because we're being retired, like I like to do something every day. So, not really, I'm not really uh, working, but we're doing something every day. We're going to walk today. Now that's something we couldn't do. Most of my career was in radio. You can't tell, my voice right now is not a good radio voice, but I wasn't really a disc jockey though. We did, we did like a morning show, well we did a morning show. Rob and I did a morning show for 17 years, but I started in 1984, so I had like 36 years of radio under my belt. But, but the radio, the morning show that Rob and I did, well we actually did two morning shows. One was for 17 years, and there was one before that that we did um, for 
six or seven years. I don't know how long. And then there was a children's radio show that Robin and I did um, on uh, digital cable radio, which later on became serious. And don't, don't, I don't mean to mislead you. We were not famous. We did not have a big time show. Everything was small time. And, uh, but we did have a lot of big time guests. We had some famous names. We could, I could name drop if I wanted to. But to be honest with you, only some of those famous names actually came into the studio. Most of those famous names were on the phone and uh, most of them only wanted to be on for 10 minutes. And most of them didn't come on because we had a show, they, they came on because they wanted to get the word out about something they were doing, either uh, promoting a book or a movie or uh, an event they were going to be at, yeah. So should I, should I drop some names? All right, let me see if I, how many I can remember. We, we spoke to um, the actress Jane Seymour. We spoke to Mickey Dolenz from the Monkees. We spoke to Michael, McDoug Michael McDonald from the uh, Doobie Brothers. He was really super nice. We spoke to Eddie Money. Do you remember Eddie Money? We spoke to Donnie, uh, not Donnie Osmond, but uh, Jimmy Osmond. Jimmy Osmond actually came into the studio. Um, we spoke to Bobby Goldsboro. Do you know Bobby Goldsboro? Bobby Goldsboro um, came into the studio. I think he lives around here someplace. Uh, let's see, who else can I name? We spoke to um, Dick Cheney's wife, <laughs> the vice president's wife at that time. I think she wrote a children's book. Uh, spoke to the guy from, uh, I can't remember the band, but there's a guy from a famous band that he, he wrote a children's book about him. Mike and, Mike and the Bike or something. I don't remember who that was. Okay. Who else did we speak to? Uh, that's just a few names. Robert remembers more of them than I do. Plus, they're probably written down someplace. Uh, I guess I can, I'm trying to draw a blank now on the famous names, but anyway, we spoke to those people. And that's what we, that's what we did. Well, anyway, so the reason, whole reason I brought up the radio is not to tell you that. It was to say that when you do a radio show, you're stuck. You're in a studio, you're behind a microphone, you don't go anywhere, you know? You, I mean, you can go out, you can do a remote broadcast, but it's not the same as going for a walk in the state forest or going for a walk around the pond or, or even, even just taking a drive someplace. You, you are literally, most jobs, this is true by the way, it's most, most jobs. The, the jobs I've had that were not radio jobs um, for example, I mean, menial work, like delivering, I used to drive a truck for the, uh, newspaper and my job was to, to bring the newspapers to the delivery people who would then bring the newspapers to the customers. So I used to drive all over the county and, uh, bring those bundles of papers to those delivery people. And, uh, that was great as far as work is concerned because you know, you're know you in the building when you first get there and then you you know that you're not gonna have to be there all day because you're gonna be in the truck. And when you're in the truck, it's just you and the road. You know, you have deliveries to make, but there's no boss, there's no coworkers, it's just you and the truck. And uh, I used to like that particular type of work because even though I had to be in the studio, uh, the studio, even though I had to be in the, the building, <laughs> the studio. <laughs> uh, it was it was nice to be able to get out. All right, what I'm doing here in this painting here, I am, I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to uh, put the wildflowers in. And if you saw me running my finger across the, the brush, it was because I was testing it as a dry brush to see if it might be able to flick, flick drops of paint. Let's see if I, if I can do it here. 
Yes, he was starting to do it. And the whole idea was to just to create a splatter, a splatter, a bunch and bunch and bunch of little white dots that would be uh, for the flowers. There. There, you see, they're starting to get on there. I guess you could do it if you want to make snow also. I should do that in the winter. I should make, see, can you see it? Some of the little white dots, they're starting to show up. But they're not as big as I wanted them to be. So then I took the brush and I did that. And that, I started putting little white dots. And the idea is that these were gonna be these daisies all over the field. And of course, daisies have a yellow center to them. And uh, so what I did is I let them dry and then I painted in the yellow center. And that's all I did. That's how I did them. But you see how it brings the painting to life? Doesn't that change it? Like it was kind of bland before, but once I started putting in those wildflowers, the painting came alive. And I like that. So you have to remember to put the, the flowers in the background a lot smaller and the foreground a lot bigger. And you don't have to paint a million of them. It just has to look like there's a million of them. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't that, it's not working out nice. So. Yeah. There's a place in uh, North Carolina that I like to go. It's called Boone. And Boone has a lot of hilly pastures like this. A lot of places that you can just find and have a picnic or or just just walk, just enjoy the outdoors like like we did yesterday at this uh, Indian Lake State Forest. So, oh yes, yeah, so what I want to do is I want to get some of those dots off the tree because it didn't make sense to have them on the tree. So I'm just lift, I'm just lifting them off the tree. So now they're only in the grassy area. Yeah, there's still more to go on here. And then I'll have to dry it. I think I used the, the heater, the hair, it's not a hair dryer, but it's like a blower. Then I'll try it. What am I doing now? By the way, when I'm, when I'm using the brush in that part of the pan, that on the right side of each of these pans, I have some uh, dried gouache. Because gouache can be reactivated with water, so. I went over there to get some of the gouache because I wanted to add some yellows in this case. So it looks like sunlight. Sunlight flood. Glowing on the tree. Uh, if you get a chance, if you could subscribe to the channel, that helps out with the algorithm. I use that word, but I don't really know what I'm saying. It's an algorithm. Everybody says algorithm, so I'll say it, algorithm. They say if you if you want people to find your videos, you have to have people in the algorithm. <laughs> so if you found it, you must be in it. You must be in the algorithm. Like in the vortex. You must be in the vortex. Yeah, that's the dryer right there. That's a blow dryer. Yeah, I'm, I'm narrating this right now because I, I was doing the whole thing. I wasn't talking at all. I was just thinking about stuff. Yeah, it's kind of a nice looking little landscape painting. I think at this point I was starting to think to myself that I don't really like the sky as light as it is. So I added some blue to it just to make it a little bit more sky-like. Yeah. So this would be a nice thing to give somebody, somebody who, uh, I, I think I've mentioned this before, that our church has this program where they give out, they give you the names of some people who are homebound, who are sick, maybe who are in the hospital or just depressed or just, you know, just need a little cheer. And so, so what we do is we send them cards. Most people buy cards. But Robin and I like to paint our cards. 
and then we send them the painted card and I write a little note in there, a little encouraging thing like, I hope you're feeling better. You know, I, I enjoyed the last time we chatted, we talked about I don't know, how to make a meatloaf or whatever. <laughs> you know, you know how it is with us people. Just, just supporting each other, just, just, uh, try, you can't make the, you can't make the whole world better. You can't, there, there are some nutcases in this world who rule the world, who just want to do nothing but harm to the world. And I don't know what to do about that. But most people that I know are just average people just trying to make a meatloaf or paint the card or ride a bicycle on a trail, or maybe deliver newspapers. Uh, so, it's just most people just trying to get through their day. They're raising their kids. They're playing with their kids. They're taking the kids to school. They're going to school. Uh, and then there's those that seem to be in a position of power and they're in the news all the time and they're not exactly the nicest people. It's just, uh, it's just part of the way the world is. But I can't do anything about that. I can do a little bit. I guess I can vote and I do vote, but I don't, I can't really do much about it except for vote. So all I can do is I can worry about the people around me. My art, my art skills are often uh, requested. There's a couple of people who are, are woodworkers and they can make really wonderful things out of wood, but they're not painters, they're not artists. Well, they are artists in the sense of woodworking because that's an art, but they need sometimes things painted. Like there was a guy who made some elves for Christmas. He's gonna sell them in November, even though it's only April. So he asked me if I would paint some faces on the elves. Yeah, I did. You know, I don't mind helping out like that. We had a couple, we had a couple who uh, have this ambition to start a camp that will help um, married couples who are going through difficult times. I don't know the whole details about the idea for the camp, but they asked me to create an artist rendering of what the, the clubhouse would look like. You know, they gave me some rough sketches and I did. I, I did the best I could. And uh, we don't, I don't charge for that stuff. They ask me, what, what do you want? How much does it cost? And I'll say nothing. And then they'll always, they'll always thank me with a gift card to, to a restaurant or something like that, which is always nice. Yeah, restaurants are good. <laughs> like going out for something. Just sitting there, right? You like doing that? Well, it looks like the card is almost done. Maybe there's about five minutes left of the video. I don't remember what I did in those five minutes. Maybe I darkened some areas. And that's probably all I did. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm going to hopefully remember to try to put a uh, Facebook page for, for Papa Paints. And uh, that way you guys can communicate with me better. And you can still communicate with me through the uh, YouTube comments. But, but, but you know what, the, the Facebook page would enable you to post your pictures too, which would be super nice. But if you do have a video that you've made, I'd love to see it. I, I like when we share things like that. I don't think that's the finished card. I wonder if I did the whole thing. I might have added some after uh, after I finished video hitting. I might have added some. Let me see. Here's the, here's the finished one. Looks like the tree goes to the top. Goes over the top. And that looks like in the picture there, it's not, I didn't get that in there. So I must have added something just a little bit after the uh, video was recorded. So, 
Yeah, I think I'm showing you the finished card, but but then later on I changed my mind. It wasn't really. I, I didn't like that blank space, that negative space above the train. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I did do it with the video running. Let's see. I sure did. Well, what do you know? <laughs> For some reason, I thought I turned the, the recorder off. Yeah, I just didn't like that negative space above the tree. I wanted it to reach beyond the edge. And I think I added more to the tree on the right side. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I forgot what I did. So, today we'll take, go out for a walk. We'll go out for a hike. Robin has a backpack. She looks like a real hiker, too. When she hikes, oh man. <laughs> we bring water and a towel. I always bring a towel because I sweat so bad. And uh, the water is always helpful to have. So we'll do that today and get some more photographs and have some more reference photos for other paintings in the future. Yeah, that looks right. So, um, if you're watching this, um, like I said, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put music behind this. I probably will. Um, I've been using music by a guy named Kevin McLeod. So I, I love it. It's real gentle. If that's, it, it's probably what I'm going to do. So you're probably hearing it the whole video. Um, and I got the music off of the YouTube's studio I think is what they call it and then uh, give him credit he's I put the it's a creative commons license that I use that well YouTube gives it to you you know somehow I don't know how that works exactly uh, but I just like the, the, the soft gentle thing he does so all right Guess I'll, I'll finish this video and then I'll uh, upload it and then I'll get ready and go out to the pond around or near Rainbow River. Go walking over there. Maybe we'll see some animals. Maybe we'll see some deer. Anything but a bear. I don't want to see a bear. <laughs> All right, I think I'll let the music carry it out. Um, hey, you guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for the, your kind comments um, and thank you for sharing your thoughts and your art and uh, if you happen to make a card and you know somebody who whose day would be brightened up just by getting a, a pretty card that you hand painted and don't forget don't forget it's important to sign it just a little thing on the bottom that's where i used to put it right there i didn't do it yet um or you could write something on the back I always keep the middle, the inside blank, so that they can write something if they want to give the card to somebody else. But give yourself credit when you paint the card. Make sure you say hand-painted by you, so people know, because I'm not going to be alive forever, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. But it looks, like, it looks like we all disappear eventually. So when you disappear, after you're gone, people have something with your name on it. I don't know why it's important, but it is. People seem to like that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, see that, that little bit of extra darkness really helped bring it out. It's, 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 just a, a, it's a play between dark and light. Every single painting is a play between dark and light. So it looks like it's almost done. All right. Well, thank you for watching. You guys take care of yourselves. And I'll talk to you tomorrow or, or Monday or wherever. Okay? All right. Thank you. Bye.